Hey everybody, my name is Dan Clark and this is my wife Angela. Hi guys. And uh, thank you for tuning in to today to our channel Life After Religion. And we just wanted to ask you a question and just say, have you ever thought about what kind of miracle it took for you, me, Angela, all of us, all of us who are listening to get out of the organization? Look at how many people are still in there under mind control. How long did I talk to that lady the other day, Angela? An hour and 40 minutes? An hour and 40 some minutes. And it's on a YouTube video a couple back. But the lady was under total hypnosis. She, she was like under a spell. All she kept saying was the watchtower this and Jehovah put him in charge and we use the name Jehovah. Totally under a spell. Couldn't see that they'd lie to her, that they false prophesied, that they did this. But me and Angela were talking the other day and we were thinking, you know, we were never meant to get out of there. These are indoctrination camps. This is the, what I wanted to say today more than anything. We started to realize these are indoctrination camps. Think about it. They tell you when to eat, to come to the meeting at this time. This is when we're gonna feed you. It was the last thing you thought about when you went to bed. It was the first thing you thought about when you woke up. You had to read the textbook. You had to read the yearbook. You had to go door to door. You had to do this. And then they monitored, monitored you. They told you, are you studying? Are you having a home Bible study? How many hours do you have? You were micromanaged under a microscope by the elders, right? They would come up to you and, and talk to you about your family and this and that but nobody was out of their sight. And I realized, oh my God, me and Angela talked about it the other day and we said, this is just like a prison. Or jail. Or jail. Mm -hmm. You know, jail's got a big light, they're watching everybody, the guards are watching everybody. That's what it was like in the Kingdom Hall. People were snitching each other off, telling on this person, telling on that person. But, it would, but, it was, but what was happening in there, in the organization, was that there was a lot of fear. There was a lot of indoctrination. You better not go outside the assemblies, you remember? You're, you're going to die if you go outside. You're going to get killed if you go outside. You're not going to get in the new system if you go outside the you're doors. You're be in Satan's world if you go outside, right? Yeah. Bad things are going to happen to you. It's like saying you're going to be cursed. Yeah. You know, it's just like saying that. And you have intense fear about that. Yeah. And so you don't leave. But you guys, you got out of this. And, and you're in the beginning sta stage of some people, and some are well along. But, you know. Tell them about worldwide, Angela. How many people get out of there? Yeah, how many yeah, people he, do you know that got out? Okay, I don't have one single friend wow. that's from the X-World, my X-Worldwide. There are people, there are groups. And I've tried, man, I'll tell you what, it's hard to break into those groups. They are so hard. They're hardened. And honestly, there's other religions, um, the cults, they're even worse than that. They don't, they it's hard to really get out fully in their minds and um, they tend to kind of go back in a little groups but even if they get out for a little while they go back it's what we do right we've talked about this before how you're in and out and in and out for a while before you finally stay out longer each time longer but I'm telling you what I don't have one XJW friend not one and yeah. um, it's that's how hard they are to, to break break yeah. down and get free they just go back so and, it's a miracle uh, it is it really is a miracle you guys are amazing like i said we we weren't meant to get out mm -hmm. we were think about it we were talked to morning <laughs> noon and night we were given assignments we were graded assignments graded i mean we couldn't escape the clutches of these guys then they took the bible and they told us we were what? When we wish to do good, we do bad. They, they took away our, our livelihood. They took away our gifts. All of us are gifted. We were given talents. And what did they tell us? You were only as good, you were only good if you handed out the watchtower. You were only good if you got so many hours. You were only good if you were reaching for ministerial servant and so on and so forth. And I just think, man, that is such a miracle that we got out of there, you know? It is, and, and I think I want to say this, is that it, it isn't just like you get out and you're, obviously you know this, guys, that when you get out you're just free and you feel great and now you can just be, you know, yourself and, you know, you, you know your heart, you know, you, you, you know love and you experience love. Just all of a sudden everything you maybe dream that life could be like, you think when you get out of there, you know, you would hope, but you've already been told that it's Satan's world out there, so you know that's not going to happen and so it takes time because you have to get used to the fact that you know having um, a Christmas maybe for the first time let's just say you experienced that okay um, I did and um, at first it was scary you have guilt you have fear 
because it was programmed into you, right? And all these thoughts that come in your head about how it's, you know, the Satan kind of a holiday. It, it, it's a very worldly. It's pagan. All this. And but then you see so much about it that wasn't. It was was not what it was cracked up to be. Um, you know, you maybe see Santa Claus and you see the how he reacts with the children at some event somewhere and, and you just you see the love in that and 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 you just kind of soften a little bit and then as time goes by you just start to realize that you know it's really not what these guys have said and, and nothing's bad ha bad happened to me um That's right. because I, I went and saw that or I thought that or whatever you slowly but surely as years the years go by and everything's not how they said we slowly start to relax and it just takes time I, I wish it wasn't that way but it is but I think what I want to say to you and that's what I'm encouraging you tonight is that you know what nothing bad happened to me and Dan no um, it's not like that we were told and uh, if anything our love has grown because that's one of the problems is that as Dan have s spoken to you before they shut down your heart center um, you're trusting your inner heart uh, which is where God I that's how we understand it. God that's where God is in the inside of us um, and and teach that's the Holy Spirit's job teaching us and that love is is so powerful in there but when it's shut down all the time our heart is also a brain they've proven this there's a, a heart brain besides a brain it's even more powerful than this brain it has more energy power and everything about it is more powerful but we shut that down hard the witnesses did that my religion did that we're a white church of God and so we, we have to relearn how to get this thing going again and when we do we find that we our heart opens love comes in and then guess what we have something to give others we have inspiration to give others we got better hugs to give each other um, other people and we we get to really enjoy them and 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 have something to give and compliment them all these kind of wonderful things that have to do with love but when we're shut down we don't have much to give so if anything I, i'd like to encourage you this this season to open your heart to at least the love okay if you can't do christmas because it's still fearful about it open your heart up to the love part of it and just see the interaction going on maybe go to a parade if you still can um go to some musical something or rather i don't know whatever you could do to just kind of and notice the love and and try to accept it and and let it in and just know that in that's your heart space opening up and the more that you do that and then also receiving the more you're going to be able to give out and it's going to make the world a better place. It's going to make you feel good about yourself. And it's going to prove that, huh, interesting. That was not in my religion growing up. I don't remember that kind of love being there. Wow. And then you realize, some one more thought, God is love. And this is God. And you start things start to change bit by bit by bit. So I wanted to say that. And, and Dan, what do you want to yeah, add? Yeah, that sounds good. That's true. That's exactly true. And I, and I wanted to say this just as an observation. Yeah, you know, I can't help it. You, you notice how we watch the, uh, sometimes we'll go on JW.org and watch the talks. Yeah. And, and I noticed that, you know, Stephen Ladd and those guys, they talk to the people like they're babies. And I, and, I oh. kept, and I kept thinking, why are they doing that? Why are they talking like baby talk? Just think about it. You remember, you know, Stephen Lett. Yeah, you know, I mean, think about how you would talk to a baby going to sleep. You read a book and you say, did you know? that the sky, that huh. did, did you know Jehovah wants your attention? I mean, you know, oh. this is how you talk to a baby. Oh. So I sat back and I thought, why are they doing that? It's why yeah. Why do they talk like that? I figured it out. What? The people's growth is stunted. They oh. are talking to babies. What? They're talking to oh. people that don't think for themselves. They're talking to people that they have that they have told this is what's time to eat this is what time it is to go to bed like baby, this is like what children. sex you should have this is what books you should read they have played mom and dad oh. they are still playing mom and dad well, well here's been my quandary dan yeah. i keep thinking why do these people not see that and and be disgusted with the fact that they're being talked to in this way and i'm like how come they they don't just believe why do why are they listening to they're, this they're, how could they handle it i would be so insulted that they talk to me in this way and i i've not understood it for the life but of they're, me but they're like babies with their mouth open oh honey you know in governing by oh. says jehovah wants your valuable oh. things oh my god jehovah it's so don't slow. need your money but jehovah would love your yeah you know and it's oh. like but but i realized that 
when you get into a cult and you put all the responsibility on those men up here somewhere and, and you don't take responsibility, you will eat when they tell you to eat. You will come to a Zoom meeting with a suit and tie. You will do this. You will do this in the bedroom. You you'll take these this. drugs and you won't. It you goes won't, on and on. This. You stay as a child. So I realized oh they gosh. talk to babies as if they need milk. Oh my you know, think goodness. about this. Think about this. As Angela and I have talked about this before, but they have convinced you and me. They did at one time that we were good for nothing slaves. Oh. Can you imagine? Now, what were they? They were the priestess. They were the anointed. They were those ones that were going to get the heavenly place. You were just supposed to listen to every word they said. In fact, they said recently, listen to us because your life depends oh, on yeah. it. I heard and that. it does. That's what they said. And it's just unbelievable that we've placed ourselves under this kind of jurisdiction, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I wonder if some um, ex-Jehovah's Witnesses still feel like Stephen Lett uh, speaks normally, because I do not see him speaking normally. To me, it, it sounds like he's, he's retarded or that he's speaking to people that are retarded. And I wonder, I wonder how many people that are in the Jehovah's Witness faith actually think that that seems odd. Because I think, I feel like they should all be thinking it's really weird, really odd that they're talking to us like children, like little children. And I'm starting to realize that Dan might be right. They, they've dumbed them down so bad that they, they just have reverted to children. And you know what? I just thought about something. When I, when I was going through some really, really bad abuse and my family was doing an intervention on me, I'm trying to get me to do what they wanted and, and it was sick, okay? It was just beyond sick. But anyway, it was so traumatic that my voice went to a little four-year-old child and it was because at that age I was abused and so my voice went to that, that place of when I felt that way and my, my voice talked like a, like a four-year-old because it was so traumatic. And I don't hope to God has never happened ever since that time, but when people are treated badly and abused and treated like little children, you can revert back to, um, oh, yeah. that's one thing I know for trauma. sure. Yeah, so maybe they're traumatized. I, oh, I don't yeah. know what's causing them to be okay with that kind of baby talk, but my goodness, I know. that is weird. But, it, but it's definitely a spell. I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you why it's a spell. Because when I talked to that lady, I, I think I told you a woman called me, uh, sent me a letter, left her phone number on it, and I called her back, and we had this conversation. But what was interesting was I said, they said that they were mediator. The governing body said that they are the mediator. They're the ones Jesus gives the spiritual food to them, and then it comes down to us, right? It trickles down to us. And I asked her, what was truth about it? What was this about it? What was that about it? And she looked, she said to me on the phone, she says, what do you think? They have a, what'd she call it? An email address or a direct line to God? Is that what you think? And I said, that's what they said they were. And I said, and think about this. They said that Jehovah, you know, they picked up the phone, right? They said, Jehovah said that he has executed judgment on all the world on all the religions. It's already done. Jehovah's executed judgment. So me and Angela were in a hall not long ago. It was before all the COVID and stuff went down. Just before. And we saw the magazine and it said Jehovah executed judgment on Babylon the Great, on Christendom. That's what it they, said. they said it, it's, it's over. It's, it's done. They've been judged. What yeah. kind of connection do you have now? You told me, lady, they don't have a direct connection. You told me they don't have a, what do you think? They have a phone line? That's what the lady said. What do you think? They have a phone line? And I said, yeah, they're telling you they are the phone line. They're telling you, even though they've been wrong for over a hundred years. Oh, they're doing the best they can. Or, no, they said they have the direct connection. They said they're giving you the spiritual food at the proper time. They said that they have the voice. So I found it interesting that the lady was so in denial. She just, she said, she just laughed everything off. Oh, you just think they have a direct connection. Well, they don't. Well, then why are you following them? Why are you continuing to listen to their dumbed down rhetoric that you're no good, that you're weak, that you're, you know, all the programming that we had. You know, I felt unworthy the majority of time that I was in there. I always felt unworthy. Well, you know what unworthiness does? It makes a good slave because how do I get worthy? 
Though they tell you how to get worthy. How many magazines did you pass out, Brother Clark? Did you send out so many letters this month? Did you do this this month? How many books did you do? You did 50 books and 30 magazines? That's incredible. How many Bible studies do you have? And that was the only way of getting worthiness out of them. Yeah. And anyway, Angela, yeah, you and were worldwide, say. no, no, just in worldwide, it was like that too. It's like you got to keep the Sabbath, you got to keep the holy days just right. You can't be, you can't make sure you don't go beyond sundown before you, you stop your working. And you know, it's all about working sundown to sundown and all these rules, rules, rules. And you know, can't pay your tithes ten percent. And I mean, it was so many things all the time. It was crazy. Yeah. And that's how you were pleasing to them. And if you didn't, you're going to be getting a visitation. You know, maybe kicked out of the church for you know whatever is that you're doing wrong it's endless rules you have to wear your skirt here and no makeup and then another year it's makeup and always changing the rules you know and, and, and you're obeying these men who are changing the rules that they say they got from god yeah what in the world why are we buying this stuff you know and i gotta tell you i've i've known some of these world widers and it freaks me out they're gone there's nobody home they're they're totally in fear and shame oh, yeah. just like us as witnesses and I got, I got to tell you, that was all done with the Bible. That was all done with the, with the use of the Bible in the wrong hands. I got to tell you, there's a lot of good stuff in the Bible. But the way the witnesses use the Bible is Jehovah's angry, Jehovah's mad, Jehovah's going to kill you, Jehovah's going to genocide the world. They How gave many... you horrible, scary pictures in the magazines. Yeah. They did the same exact thing in my religion. All fe fear about the, you know, the future, you know, God, that God's coming back soon. So instead of Jehovah, it was just God. Um, the end is coming armageddon is coming fear 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 magazines full of these horrible scary pictures that scare kids half to death same exact as you guys have a revelation book we had a red one just like you and same scary things yeah. to keep you in because outside of there is nothing but you know the devil's world and besides we're all gonna be genocided that's how we always like to say it genocided by jehovah mine was god anytime anytime god's coming back any moment so you just you hang on for dear life That's is right. what you do. Hoping, hoping it will be over soon. Guess what? Dan's been out now already, what, 21 22, years? 22, yeah. And it hasn't ended. And before that, how many years were you in there? 40. Yep, 40. 40. You guys, how long do we keep on holding on? God said when he comes back, he wants to find us working, not waiting. Yeah, and I want to ask you, how many times do you th have you heard that Jehovah's executed judgment. Jehovah's going to execute judgment. How many times have you heard he's angry? How many times have you heard he's jealous? He's a jealous God. Only those who call in the name of Jehovah will be saved. Mm -hmm. How many times have you heard that? Mm -hmm. I mean, we heard that every day. Mm -hmm. Every day we were shaking in our boots. Did we do enough magazines? Did we do enough this, do enough that? But anyway, me and Angela, we'll just, we'll just kind of wind it up here. But we just wanted to tell you, it's, it was so much. We really realized the other day when we were talking, we said, oh my God, this was like a concentration camp. It really was. Right. Every move monitored, everything we were doing watched, everything we were told. You, you know, the, the hours watched, the, this watched, the study, how you commented, you, you were graded. And then you had the fear of being killed should you leave. Should you look on the internet? Should you do this? Should you do that? We were under intense fear. Well, like, like a jail has that solitary confinement room. Oh, yeah. Okay, so when you're a Jehovah's Witness and you screw up, and you don't please them somehow. They don't like how you handled that, how you did that. Whatever it is, they choose. It doesn't really matter. They make up the rules, really. It's what it seems like to me. And if they don't like it, you're out. So you're in solitary confinement, just like a jail. For years. For years, right. And the same thing with that that tower up above that's in charge of everybody. And mm, mm, pointing, pointing, pointing. You know, you have to do, and you're in the back. You're in solitary confinement. Sometimes for, till you get out, till you can't take it anymore. That's not right, you know. That is nope. not right. Um, I, I saw. I worked in a jail, and I saw a whole lot of abuse. You know, I saw people being accused uh, of being guilty when they hadn't even been tried. In jail is not. You're, you're tried. You, you've not been tried yet. You're in jail waiting to be tried into court, and so you may or may not be guilty. But they were treated as guilty. You know, from the get-go, there's no, you know, um, until proven innocent. There's no such thing as that. You're just guilty. And it's like in the witnesses. When they say you're guilty, you're guilty. There's no trial. They decide. It's just like that. It, it is. It's That's like right. a jail. It really, truly is. And it is like a, a, a camp. 
you know, you're, you join a horrible camp, a horrible jail. Yeah. And um, so we know how, how hard it is to get out of a prison. Oh, man. And especially a mind control prison, which yeah. what we were in. It took great courage. Maybe some of us were kicked out. Maybe someone, some of us just walked out. But we got out. Now I think what the most beautiful thing we can do is, is shine our light back in to the prison, back in to JW.org, so that other people can see the way out. See, now we, we have a light about us, a light that shows like, wow, they didn't die coming out of there. They didn't turn into the scum of the earth, pigs returning to the mire. They got on with their life. They, they made a life for themselves. So, so I love the idea that you and me and Angela and all of us are soldiers for truth. And, and we're gonna turn our lights back to the org and we're gonna blind them with it. We're gonna expose them for what they are. We're light bearers now, right? Yes, we got right. out, we're escape artists. You and me are escape artists. That's we right. got out of mind control. We got out of hypnosis. We got out of spellbinding. They put that in us 24 seven. They spellbound us into fear, doubt, and worry. We couldn't trust the next step we were gonna take. We thought Jehovah was just gonna come in and snatch us off. Yes. I mean, any moment I watch, I watch these people in these other religions doing the same thing. They're, they're walking, they're scared. You know, they're afraid to move and their whole lives are shut down and they're almost vegetables, aren't they? They really, really are. And, and we wanna tell you one more thing that's kind yeah. of coming up new in the news everywhere is where people starting are beginning to realize the very strong tie to the occult um, in all kinds of symbologies all over the fronts of the yeah, books becoming more and more aware and and it's at uh, a, 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 or is it um, Denmark they've got a facility there that's actually in the uh, eye of the the, eye of the, the whole property and the way that they put the buildings and the, uh, they put literally an eye of Horus at the top and all kinds of symbology, uh, cult symbologies all over the place. Like they and said, it wasn't by accident. No. And um, they, this lady was saying that talk, that showed from the aerial views of it, then somebody else took a little, what do they call that thing that goes over the top of your... Drone. A drone over the top of it so you can physically see the green grass, the whole thing. But oh my gosh, you guys, what the heck's going on? And those, those symbols, we're beginning to understand, actually cause your body to go weak. They have powers. They have power. And it's beginning to come out that these guys have been using using these things probably to weaken you and dumb you down because um, there's some very powerful symbols that really cause havoc a chaotic they call them chaotic uh, demons get symbols that that are chaotic they cause confusion um, Lots so of we're stuff. learning we're learning a lot fast all of a sudden a lot of uh, stuff about the Jehovah's Witnesses and the occult are coming out like crazy and that's why we say you're a miracle yes. because we don't even know what kind of spells we're under mm -hmm. like Angela said there's a, a video we'll have to show you on the symbology of, of signs and they have power yes and we were under that we were yeah. under the watchtower spell yeah I mean and now we're starting to see more and more of this uh, occult connection which the watchtower is and it's pretty scary yeah, it because is. you think about it man there's still millions of people in there yeah. that are still blind they can't see what's happening right in front of their face they can't see a hundred years of false prophesying the bible tells you if they false prophesy don't fear these ones they, they can't see that it, it just goes on and on it does you know? we're, we're all learning a lot but we're, we're beginning to learn a little bit more now what we've really been able to get out of pretty serious like i said worldwide i found out that the headquarters in pasadena california had all kinds of cult symbology on different fountains beneath where the water came down with the spout where the with the eye and just all kinds of weird stuff in the you know inside the buildings and I'm like what the heck what I grew up in too and yeah. so um you know these things all affect us very much so there was a college in that building where all those those gardens and all that were that all this stuff was hidden around you know just it affects us and we we're now realizing how much it's beginning to affect people we're just beginning to understand. So yes. anyway, you guys have come out a lot. We're yep. proud of Congratulations. you. Congratulations. And keep up your good work. And, yep. and thank you again for all your comments. We really do appreciate them. I try to read them all. I really do. You can ask Angela on oh, Saturday yeah. morning, I try to Sunday. Them all. I try to answer them, but there gets to be so many. Sometimes there's four and 500, but yeah. I want to personally yeah. thank each and every one of you because it means something to me when I see those comments. And Angela, 
you guys comment to Angela and me, and, and it just yeah. shows that we're all making a difference here. Yeah, thanks for the happy birthday wishes, too. You guys are great. Yeah. You know, you're my family. You know, I don't have XJW family. You guys are the closest I've got. We've got a lot of similar th things that we learned in our religion that was like yours, and you guys are treating me like family, and I really do appreciate it. I, I really want you to know that I love you, and I thank you for that. Yeah, so Very keep much. up the good work, and remember, you're soldiers of truth. And let's shine our light back at the org and show them we're bright, shiny lights. And hopefully that light will help others come out of there. That's what's happening now with all of us talking, all of us sharing. You know, people are seeing, hey, they're okay. Like Angela said, hey, they're okay. They didn't die out there. Hey, they're not pigs returning to the mire. Mm -mm. Hey, they're we're not, not cursed. We're not cursed. We're <laughs> not know. under Jehovah's foot. Mm -mm. So it's a beautiful thing. So we just wanted to say thank you. And we also want to say if you think the, the video will help somebody, feel free to repost it. I'm more than happy to. And, uh, and that's it. Yeah, that sounds good. All right. All right. Thank you so much. Thank and you we'll talk for listening. To you soon. All right. All right. Good night. Bye-bye.